Hi, good afternoon everybody. So, uh, what I will discuss with you today is all about the international trade business for business. No? So, I hope you like my discussion for this afternoon. So, ito ko lang yung ano, yung... yung slides ko I don't know if uh, wait lang I don't know if okay lang sa inyo okay so today what I will discuss with you is all about the global environment of business or international business so first before we proceed with our concept concept before we proceed with the concept of in international uh, trade business so we will discuss first the meaning of international business so international business focus on domestic business and international businesses so what is domestic business domestic business is a business that acquires all its resources and sell its product or service within single country o ito yung mga businesses na uh, nag-ooperate lang siya domestically halimbawa dito sa Pilipinas no ikaw ay nagbebenta ng baboy ang tawag sa iyo ay you are having your own domestic business. No? Nag-operate lang siya dito sa bansa mo. Or, for example, ikaw ay nagbebenta lang ng abaka. Pero dito ka lang naman sa Pilipinas. No? So, meaning to say, you are operating your own domestic business. Because, in one single country ka lang eh. Doon ka lang sa national country mo. Next, we have international businesses. International businesses are businesses that is primary based, primarily based in a single country but acquire some meaningful share of its resources or revenue or both from other countries. So, ano ba ibig sabihin nito? Ikaw yung nag-operate ng business sa isang single country pero marami kang subsidiaries. No? Example nito is yung Petron. Okay? Yung Petron Tama ba? Yung Petron ay business siya dito sa Pilipinas pero meron pa siyang subsidiaries sa iba pang bansa. Another example na ito, yung Night Night Company. Yung Night Company, sila ay nagpro-produce ng shoes, uh, sports shirt or sports equipment which based sila sa Amerika. At hindi lang sila sa Amerika nag-operate, nag-operate din sila sa over 120 countries around the world. So, ang tawag doon ay international businesses. Okay? Hold on for a minute. Okay, so I'm back already. So let's proceed with our discussion. Okay, next. Okay, next. The meaning of international business and its continuation and its content. Multinational business is one of that has worldwide marketplace from which it buys raw materials or borrow money or manufacture its product to which it subsequently sell its product. So, ano bang ibig sabihin na ito? Ito yung mga kumpanya wherein bumibili sila ng mga raw materials, nagbabarrow ng pera at nagmamanufacture kung saan sila nandun o kung saan sila naka-place. Example, no? Example, yung uh, mga nag mga nagmamanufacture ng textile, okay? 
yung mga nagmamanufacture ng textile, sila ay gumag multinational business sila. Kumbaga, nag-operate sila sa buong mundo. Bumibili sila ng raw material sa mga karating bansa nila, nanghihiram sila ng pera sa karating bansa nila at nagmamanufacture sila kung saan sila ng doong lugar, di ba? At nagbebenta rin sila ng product nila. Yun yung multinational businesses. Example nito yung mga petroleum businesses, di ba? Yung mga Shell, Phoenix, yan. International company yung mga yan, pero nag-operate din sila dito. Another example of multinational businesses, no? Ito yung mga uh, nag-i-import ng product. No? So, meron silang Uh, manufacturing dito dito na sila sa bansa natin nagmamanufacture ng mga textile nila, raw materials nila ng mga product nila pero meron pa silang other businesses sa ibang bansa na inoperate nila next we have the global business a global business is a transcend national boundaries and is not committed to a single home country so global business ibig sabihin hindi lang siya nag-operate sa isang country o yung mother unit niya hindi lang sa isang country kundi sa maraming bansa okay okay so we have the uh, levels of business activity so we have the lowest level which is domestic business ito yung pang local lang level of international activity it can either be international business or multinational business fix namin natin multinational So, nag-operate siya sa, sa buong mundo. At doon din siya gumagawa ang nagsisell ng product niya. Tulad ng uh, example of multinational business, yung mga, yung mga car manufacturer, di ba? Oh. And then, highest is the global business. Yung global business, nag-operate siya sa buong mundo. No? Ito yung mga stock markets, global business yan. Forex, global business yan. No? Term to remember. So, we have the market economy. Market economy is an economy based on the private ownership of business and allows the market factors such as supply and demand to determine business strategy. Okay? So, as a market economy, one of the indicators is the supply and demand in order for them to cope up or to formulate a business. And then, when we say market system, this is the process of the cluster of countries that engage in high level of trade and econo uh, economy. No? So, market system, this is the process where in, for example, Singapore and Philippines, they are engaged with the level of trade for import and export system. And that's their system. No? Exporting. Okay, when we say exporting, It is making a product in a firm's domestic marketplace and selling it to another country. Example, no, Philippines, nag-export tayo ng mga seafood sa Japan, no? This is the process wherein uh, yung product natin, hindi lang natin ibinibenta. Domestically, nationally, sa Pilipinas, inilalawas din natin siya sa ibang bansa. Importing is a process of bringing goods and service or capital into home country from abroad. So, ito naman yung mga original products na binibili natin sa ibang bansa. Example, no, before kung tayo ay supplier dati ng, ng rice dito sa Asia, ngayon tayo ay nag import na. Ibig sabihin ng import, bumibili tayo ng produkto sa ibang bansa. Licensing, okay, when we say licensing, this is the arrangement whereby a firm allows another company to use its brand name, trademark, technology, patent, copyright, or asset in exchange for royalty based on sales. So, licensing, this includes the trademark, patent of the product, technology to be used, copyright of the product in order for them to produce and sell the product, no? Next. Okay, strategic alliance. Okay, this is a cooperative arrangement between two or more firms in mutual gain. Example, no, strategic alliance, no. Uh, si Petron at saka si Phoenix, they have, uh, is, they are strategically alliance with each other. 
paano ko nasabi? Kasi kapag nawawala ng product si Petron, ay si Phoenix, pwede siya kumuha ng gas kay Petron. So, these are arrangement between two big firms for mutual gains. No? Next, we have the joint venture. Joint venture is a special type of strategic alliance in which the partner share ownership of new enterprise. So, what is this? So, for example, no, si SGV is a company, company or accounting company wherein hindi na niya kaya na mag-run through her own self, his own self. That's why he joint venture with the Ernst and Young Company. It Ernst and Young Company is an international or multinational company or accounting company abroad, which is uh, operating worldwide in Asia, in Europe, and in United States. And practically here in the Philippines, they have their agreement of joint venture. No, they share ownership in order for them to form a new enterprise. Okay, so the new enterprise is named uh, EY or Ernst and Young Company Philippines. Okay, okay, so these are a set of examples. Next, we have the direct investment. Okay, when we say direct investment, this is when a firm headquartered in one country or builds or purchases purchases operating facility or subsidiary in in a foreign country so uh, this is a process wherein the firm is investing their money their resources and ability in other countries and operate their facility there no halimbawa no yung uh, dito iPhone iPhone uh, iPhone companies from United States. But they build a set of manufacturing, you know, manufacturing firm in China kasi mas mura yung labor cost doon, mas mura din yung uh, raw materials doon. Ang tawag doon ay direct investment. Okay, so table 9, so we have the table 5.5 Point fun, one, the advantage and disadvantage of different approaches of interna internationalizations. When the organization to decide to increase their level of internationalization, they adopt several strategies. Like, each strategy is matter of degree as opposed to being discrete and mutually exclusive category. And each has unique advantages and disadvantages that must co be considered first is importing or, or exporting no one of the advantages of this is small cash layout malit lang yung ilalabas mo very little risk no adoption necessary but the, the, the advantage of this is tariff and high taxes high transportation cost of course because you have to you know to use plane for you to transport your products and goods and for number three, the government restriction. Each and every, you know, uh, geographical uh, area or geographical country in the world, they have different rules and regulations, different from another, no? So, yung taxes is very, very different. Next, we have the licensing. Licensing, one of the advantages of this is increased profitability. And then extended profitability. Okay, when we see increased profitability, there is a chance that you can sell very, very high. You can sell your product in a high price in a different state or different country. For example, here in the Philippines, when we export our product in Japan, example, yung mga seafood, uh, kung dito nabibili siya, ang cost niya dito is nabibili siya ng 35 pesos. Sa our Japan, pwede siyang mabili ng uh, 1,000 pesos. Di ba? Increase in profitability. Next, extended profit. No, you can extend your profit anywhere in the world. Pag binenta mo siya sa karating bansa natin, wherein, mas malaki nga naman talaga yung kikitain mo. One of the disadvantage is inflexibility. It is not very flexible. Ano? Uh, when we say it is not very fle flexible, merong season na mabili siya, merong season na hindi siya mabili. Number two, competition. No? Example na ito, no? In Asia, we are not the only country who is uh, selling ma mangoes all over the Asia, Asian countries and all over the world. 
there are also countries that is selling mangoes no like for example india they have mangoes also like for example uh bananas no bananas bananas these are product which is not only available here in asian countries but also available in the eastern countries like for example india bangladesh and bengali Paki bengali or pakistan no so tendency of the people in the uh, in the middle east they will uh, purchase product somewhere which is very accessible for them not in the Philippines, no? So, hindi natin sila pwedeng maging customer kasi medyo malayo tayo sa kanila. We will only choose uh, neighboring countries like for example, Brunei, like for example, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam because these are Taiwan, these are neighboring countries of ours in which we can export easily our products because it is very accessible for us to export our product there. Next, Strategic alliance and joint ventures for advantages is quick market entry. Yeah, and then for sec the second one is we have the access to material technology. One of the disadvantage of this is strategic ownership limits control the profit. No, if you have your joint venture, your profit and your ownership is very limited to one another because we have the rules for that. No. Next, we have direct investment. Direct investment, one of the advantage of this is enhanced control and existing infrastructure. Because you are just investing your money, for example, in the stock, stock market. You have invested your money in SM Group. No, it, it is already existing infrastructure. It, has, it is already uh, existing business wherein you are just investing your money there. Okay, you have it has enhanced control control that you can control your money if ever that you wanted to pull out your money in that company you can do it so any time of the day but one of the disadvantage of this is strong complexity it is very complex it has greater economic and political risk also for example the the political system has chaos there is a tendency that the gdp of the country might be at risk no or greater uncertainty you can never know why so we have the global economy okay so as you can see we have the lowest point of activity going to the highest point so we have the domestic business we have also the global business and in this in the center we have the international business and multinational businesses so what is this okay for high potential and high growth economies who have been re uh, relatively underdeveloped and immature and until recently we are characterized by weak industry weak currency and poorly relative poor customers so these are high potential high growth economies okay other economies exporting countries with with property ownership and the development of infrastructure and our import players okay next we have economic system economic system refers to most countries today that are moving towards market economies we also have natural resources these are different countries who has various ability for natural resources and raw materials and then we also have infrastructure. This refers to the school, hospital, power plants, railroads, highway, ports, communication system, airfields, commercial distribution system of the country. So these are the following challenges of international management. So it includes first, high potential and high growth economies. Second, other economies. It includes property and ownership of inter import players we also had here the economic system natural resources and the infrastructure no, of international management okay so we have international management function so for economic environment we have to consider an economic system natural resources and infrastructure for political legal environment the government stability incentive for international trade this includes tariff and taxes for business trade control of international trade and economic communities 
And then for the last one, we have cultural environment which involve value, symbol, belief, language, and individual behavior across different cultures and minorities. So for example, the tari tari tariff and trade agreements. Okay, for North American Free Trade Agreement or the NAFTA, agreement among US, Canada, Mexico are gradually eliminate tariff and other barriers. Okay, meaning to say in these countries they they do not have any uh, tariff rate. For example, the exchange product or import or export product, they don't they do not have tariff taxes. Like for example, US Canada and Mexico, as you can, as you will know, these are neighboring countries, no? And then we have the EU or European Union. We have the rules and regulation for that. The principle of Western European nation who have eliminated most quota and set uniform tariff la uh, level on products imported and exported within their groups. Like first and most international and international market system. And then we also have the ASEAN nation. So this includes Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, China, and uh, Philippines, of course. So we have a market-free association here in the Philippines and in Southeast Asia, wherein we are neighboring countries that do not have any tariff then because we are neighboring countries exchanging products. Okay. So these are for the European Union. This is for the Southeast Asian people. So as you can see for the EU, this, uh, the, we have Ireland, por Portugal, Spain, France, Germany, Poland, uh, Malta, Greece, Romania, Finland, and so on and so, and so forth. For ASEAN country, we have the Philippines, of course, our very yours truly country, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, we have Cambodia also, we have Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar. Okay, so import and export balances. So what is this? So when we say balance trade, these are economic value of products, country export minus economic value of all products it imports. So ang ibig sabihin na to, yung value ng product natin, i-minus natin do sa value ng product na ini-import natin. So export minus import. Next, we have the trade surplus. Okay, when we say trade surplus, the situation in which the country export exceed into Im its import. So, mas tumaas daw yung import, no? Creating a positive balance on trade. Pag mas mataas yung import, the situation in which the country export exceed, no? Mas mataas ang import, sabi, meron daw tinatawag na positive balance of trade. Pag meron naman tayong uh, trade deficit, the situation wherein the country import exceed its export. So, ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung export, no? At dito po mapasok yung trade deficit, yung pagkukulang. Creating negative balance of trade. Pag sumobra siya, sumobrang import, surplus siya. Pag, uh, tawag dito, pag... Pag sumobra naman ng export, no, deficit siya. Next, we have balance payment. This refers to the flow of money into, into or out of the country. The money that a nation pays for imports and receive for exports. It also includes money spent for tourists, money spent on different programs, money exchanged for buying and selling foreign cur currencies. Okay, so balance payment, ito yung money, yung flow ng money na pinapadala through remittance na nare-receive natin at binabayad natin sa ating mga utang, no? So, kailangan balance daw yan. Exchange rate naman, no? The rate at which currency of one nation can be exchanged for the currency of another nation. So, yung palitan ng peso versus dollar, this is exchange rate. So, sa balance payment, dapat daw, mas mataas daw yung uh, nare-receive natin kaysa nare-receive nating dollar kaysa yung ibinabayad natin. Alam niyo ang bakit? Kasi the more na nakareceive tayo ng maraming pera, galing sa ibang bansa, no? Marami nagpapadala, marami tayong nare-receive na ganyan, marami tayong pambayad para sa mga utang natin. Yung value ng piso, mas bumababa. Ah, mas tumataas kaysa sa uh, value ng dollar, mas bumababa. 
So, the political, legal, environment, uh, I will just discuss this next week as continuation for our discussion. So, thank you and see you again next week.